I need to ask like two questions because I, was, I wasn't here last week. That was Father Jamil. But just a question. What are you expecting from the church? What are you expecting from the church? <laughs> Say something. What are you expecting from the church? Uh, I don't know. Peace of mind. Okay. Let's see. What we are expecting from the church? Don't be ashamed. Just, where is people? What are you are expecting from the church? Love and acceptance. Love and acceptance. What are you are expecting from the church? A community and a relationship with God. Now, I want to change the question. What you are giving to the church. But when I say in church, I'm not talking about building. I'm talking about the community. So what you are giving to the church? Santi, brother, save the world. What you are uh, giving to the church? <laughs> Just get close to one of the microphones. Well, I give my time and talent. Okay. Juani, what you are giving to the church? My time. Your time. Yeah. <laughs> Last. What you are giving to the church? What you are giving to the church? My attention. Your attention. Perfect. Why I'm asking that questions? Because today we celebrate the word of God among us. You know, Pope Francis, like four, uh, three, four years ago, he decided that this Sunday is going to be the Sunday that is called the Word of God. And something that we need to ask, we always ask for something. You know, you want to the church, and I want the church to be like this. I want the church to think like this. I want the church to be open to me. The question now is what we are giving to the church. And again, as I said, when I said what we are giving to the church, I'm not talking about the building. What, what, what we are giving to the person next to you. Because today the gospel is inviting us to be the living gospel. To be the living gospel that the people need. To be the living gospel in your house. That was, a, I don't know if you know, St. Francis de Assisi. Yes, no? St. Francis? St. Francis, you know, has uh, his disciples. And one of the disciples says, Francis, I don't know how to preach and I want to preach. St. Francis said, oh, you want to preach? Let's go. So they went to visit a sick person. They went to give food to the people that is hungry. They went to a school to preach, to speak. And they went to different places. At the end of the night, the disciple went to Francis and said, I'm expecting to preach. And Francis answered, everything that we did today was about preaching. To preach means that I need to have a personal relation with the Lord. To have a personal relation with Jesus Christ. How many of you has a Bible in the house? Raise the hand. I'm sure everybody. Who reads the Bible? Don't raise the hand. Don't, let us not get in trouble. <laughs> because sometimes we put the Bible in a beautiful Psalm uh, 91 or Psalm 23. And we are thinking, you know, like, just open it there. The Word of God is going to do something. We have to get in contact with the Word of God. We have to have a personal relation with the Lord. How many times in our world, in our life, we are looking for people to think like, like us, to, to be agreed with me. When I'm in, in a moment of desolation, I want a person to be there to give me, you know, like a counsel, to console me. How many times we are looking for people to be there? But how difficult it is for us to look for consolation from God? We always look from, for consolation from the world, from people, from friends, from your wife, boyfriend. But how difficult it is to sit and to listen to the Word of God, to be with the Lord, to listen to the Lord. Today, the Word of God has to enter into our own life. As Johanna was saying, she received a news, and now she's preaching that news. How we want to preach what we are receiving from God? Again, we come to church to listen. But it's not only about listening. What you are giving, and I'm, I'm not talking about money, what you are giving to the community, what you are giving to the person next to you. What you are giving when you are in the parking lot. What you are giving when you are in the school or in the different places that you go. 
There is where people is going to see that we are Christians. Again, we can preach, I can speak, I can spend hours and hours, you know, talking and talking. But it's not about talking. It's about having a personal experience with the Lord. When the Lord enters in your life, when the Lord enters in my life, He transforms our lives. He changes our pain. He changes everything that we have that takes us away from one another and helps us to come back. Other thing that we are, you know, going in the world right now is that we are thinking that we are here to save the church. And it's not like that. We're not here to save the church. We are here to, sa to be saved by the church because the church is the spouse of Jesus. The church has received a mission. The mission to proclaim, of course, we see in TV. Of course, we see in the newspapers the situation that the church is going through. But that's why when I know who is Jesus, when I have a personal relation with Jesus, when I open the Bible, when I read the scriptures, when I let the Lord to talk to me, I know what is the direction. And the direction is always to heaven. Jesus never came here to judge the world. Jesus didn't come here to show in us hell. Jesus came here to, to show in us the way to see the Father. Jesus came to this world to, for, to help us to forget one another. And especially to raise up our, our eyes to see heaven. The invitation of this Sunday is that we are one church. We're not different. All of us, we have the same dignity. The same dignity that we receive through baptism. But we are in the same boat because we are sinners. Or who here is not a sinner? So the same dignity that we receive in baptism, the same, you know, as our humans, we have our sins. But we have something that is beyond sin. That is our trust in Jesus. That is our confidence in Jesus. But to have a confidence and to trust, we have to have love. So I always said, you know, I always repeat the same phrase and I always say the same thing. We have to get in love with Jesus if we want to let the people know that we are in love. How we know that you're in love? Because you, you know, you take, you put the hand until the, the girl here, like, Jose, uh, we show to the other, you go to, to the other people and say, hey, I'm in love. I want to show you my, my girlfriend. You know, she's so nice or he's so nice. No, no, like Agustin, that he's in love. So we can see in the face when you are in love with a person. That's the same thing that we have to let the world know that we are in love with Jesus. And it's not about pretending. It's not something that is forcing that oh, I have to force to be a Christian. When we are in love, people is going to see that we are in love with Him. So my invitation for all of you, let's get more in contact with the Word of God. Let's read more the Bible and let us listen to the voice of God. And sometimes it's good to keep quiet all the sense just to listen to Jesus Christ. Amen.